Thanks for tuning in to Retire Hour, the weekly show about complete retirement planning, including income planning and investing, tax planning, estate planning, and Medicare. Join us as we take a comprehensive look at retirement with financial advisors, Danny Goolsby, Larry Clefcorn, Matt Goolsby, Jonathan McCoy, along with other members of the Market Advisory Group family of companies. Welcome to Retire Hour. Thanks for tuning in this week. I'm Matt Goolsby, and we got a lot of things prepared for you on the show this week. We've got a, basically a, a top to bottom coverage on cryptocurrency because it's been wild in the news lately, and I've gotten a lot of questions about it. But we'll, we'll talk about in our estate planning segment of how can you pass this on or how is this asset probated or, or transferred to the next generation? We'll talk about later in our tax segment, we'll talk about how is it taxed and how is the IRS now looking at some things and some maybe questions you'll get when you go to prepare your taxes this year regarding cryptocurrency. But before I get into all of that with our other advisors here in this first segment, I want to just encourage everyone out there, today is the best day you can, do, uh, you can start getting a plan together to make a better retirement. Your retirement won't improve on its own, but with a plan and education and following the changes that are happening in the retirement landscape, you can make and have a better retirement and it starts today. That's what we do on this show every week. We try and bring you educational topics and the latest news and updates to the ever-changing landscape of retirement, whether it's laws, taxes, or economic trends. But we want to be that partner that you have here at Retire Hour. So with that, thanks for tuning in this week. We've got in studio Danny Goolsby, an advisor with Market Advisory Group. And we've also gotten our remote location here in uh, in Wichita, Kansas, a, another advisor, Larry Clefcorn. Guys, I mean, I'm getting a lot of questions in the conference room, and I'm sure you guys are too, about different cryptocurrencies because the news is all over it. But I guess maybe why don't we just start off with right here and go to Larry first and and talk about what is cryptocurrency? Um, it's it, anytime you go to use it, it has to be. Uh, it has to be changed into a currency. Um, and so anytime, you know, whether it's Bitcoin or many of the other names, Bitcoin's the most popular and it's got the biggest number as, as it continues to rise and then fall and then rise and then fall. But the idea that a lot of people take towards it is an, is as an investment but there are some big businesses or and there was recently in the news uh, elon musk uh bought a whole bunch that he plans on using for business yeah and so how how do you go about and buy this danny i mean so this is just not something that you walk into your closest bank on the corner and say i would like to exchange my dollars for pesos it's a different kind of transaction it is very much a different kind of transaction. Uh, think of Mercury and trying to put your finger on Mercury, and Mercury just keeps moving around on you. With Bitcoin or with any kind of cryptocurrency, there are several things that have to be in place before you can buy it. So the first thing you have to have in place is some sort of way to hold. You have to have an account somewhere, and normally they call that some sort of wallet. So like an e-wallet, or uh, there's a site out there called Nerd Wallet. Uh, there has to be a place where uh, that holds the electronic account. But before you can do that, you actually have to convert U.S. dollars. Since we're talking United States, we have to talk about dollars into your account. So then, therefore, going to an online brokerage, for example, uh, 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 not Schwab, but the E-Trade or uh, Robinhood has been in the news a a lot lately. Uh, So some of these uh, online brokerages are where you have to buy it from. But again, it's an added uh, level of of. confusion because I have to have a a wallet before I can buy it. And I have to fund my wallet with dollars before I can buy it through an online brokerage. So there's several steps in the equation just so that I can uh, have this transaction where I can own this cryptocurrency. Now, I think that where uh, some of the confusion starts coming into is is they've used a lot of these uh, normal terms that we'd see in in other things uh, to talk about the not necessarily parallels, but talk about some of the things around the cryptocurrency. So these wallets, that's not the leather bound thing that gets really thick and worn as you put in your back pocket. It's almost like an account, right? Almost like an eBay account or it's a digital account. So it's not necessarily uh, a physical wallet. There's not much physical about about cryptocurrency. 
You know, it's it, you bring up a great point. Uh, so there is jargon or nomenclature that's thrown around to the rank and file consumer to try to equate what we're talking about. And so, yeah, one of those things that causes confusion is the nomenclature. Is as you said, I think of a wallet. I think of something in my hip pocket. Uh, you know, maybe a purse if you carry a purse. Uh, but that's not the way this works. Uh, we'll get into this a little bit later about how uh, they call it mining. Well, and, and blockchain, those are different things that we'll talk about later. But so all of these nomenclature and jargon creates, creates maybe one image in your mind to think about it. But actually, it means something uh, in, in the digital world completely different. Larry, so, you know, you talked about how there was an entrepreneur, Elon Musk, who recently bought uh, and, and started to shift that way for some business purposes. Uh, you know, what's what's giving this cryptocurrency any value? I mean, is there is there really any difference to the fact where if you and I got together and you said, you know what, you and I are going to trade seashells and we're going to value these seashells at this. Does does how, how does how does any of this cryptocurrency have any value? Is it basically a supply and demand thing? Um, yeah, there would be some supply and demand, but primarily it's, it, it's based on whatever currency you want to turn it into and at whatever price Bitcoin happens to be on that day or in that moment that you want to turn it into currency. Danny referred to, uh, of buying into it and then putting it in a wallet. The same is true there. It's whatever the value is at that moment when you do so. And with a uh, highly v you know, volatile, which I don't know of anyone that would argue that it's a very volatile stock um, or an investment, then, um, um, you know, Warren Buffett, I saw a quote by him that said, you know, he, he kind of rattled on about the whole idea of Bitcoin, but then he ended it with what caught my attention. He goes, I really see this ending badly. Well, Warren Buffett, sometimes he's right and sometimes he's been wrong. He's bought a lot of airline stocks this yep. year and dumped them as well. But he is the Oracle of Omaha and we'll give him that credit there. He's he's been very successful over over history. But yeah. this, this is just a very wide, uh, wide ranging and very quickly changing landscape. I saw somewhere that the transaction fee to use it is like something like almost seven dollars a transaction. So and it's becoming more widely accepted where we've we saw that, you know, Tesla hopes to plan to start uh, accepting it as a forms of payment in the future. But uh, we'll 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 be more uh, uh, we'll probably be seeing more and hearing of it more here in the news. But we'll be right back with more of this discussion on cryptocurrency and it changing. So stay tuned to retire. Hour. We'll be right back after this break. We'll be right back after this break. Stay tuned. Listen to Retire Hour on the go. Subscribe to the Retire Hour podcast. Search Retire Hour everywhere you get your podcasts. This segment of Retire Hour is brought to you in part by Frederick Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Why would anyone settle for less than full service? Incomplete advice could cost you thousands. Find out what dangers could be lurking in your retirement. At Market Advisory Group, in-house professionals help with today's challenges you could be facing. Tax solutions, Medicare help, estate planning, and investment advice. Our advisors work together with CPAs and attorneys to optimize your retirement. Find out what may be missing in your current plan. Call Market Advisory Group at 316-252-8707. 316-252-8707. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Check out our website, retirehour.com, where you can watch past episodes and stay up to date on current episodes. We videotape them so you can watch them or listen to them. Sign up for our podcast while you're there and get all the information that you can use for helping you in your retirement. Check out our Facebook page as well for clips from the show. to our show this week and we're discussing uh, what's been in the news a lot lately is cryptocurrencies mainly you know there's different types of crypt cryptocurrencies out there but mainly one that's been in the news a lot because of its uh, levels that it's reaching is Bitcoin but we don't want to just focus on just Bitcoin Larry I mean there are like I was saying there's there's other types of cryptocurrency out there right now we're, we're just getting uh, a lot of news stories and a lot of headlines uh, or a lot of talking heads talking about 
Bitcoin, but there's there's been some other ones that have been kind of uh, brought up lately here. But uh, you, you have anything to add as far as, you know, where where uh, if investors or people are following this, should they should they go? I mean, like that was this is kind of touching on to what I was talking to you before the break. Um, there's not really anything that gives, quote unquote, value to this cryptocurrency besides uh, people putting money behind it and or, or, or buying into it. But now we're seeing maybe some other ones creep up here in the news. Yeah. And the other ones, of course, have to compete with Bitcoin. And it's hard to predict the future. Uh, how many times have we seen something that was the original of whatever industry or, or whatever uh, uh, sector it was in? started out and it was the go-to thing and then within years they fell back and something else came in and, and became the big dog you know so um uh you know i just the more i can i continue to think this through and the more i look at it you know it's just highly volatile um and when people ask me about it I mean, from the very beginning, I've always said, only invest what you're willing to lose. Only invest what you're willing to lose because it's so unpredictable. Well, and don't you think that when, uh, and maybe this is a question for both of you guys to touch on, don't you think that after it's already been in the news, that's been when when the, the run-up, the big run-up has happened, so to speak, and then yep. uh, it's it's a fad, and, and the media is always a trailing um, uh, voice in whatever's been, been driving that, and that's what they're reporting on, and it's kind of after the fact? That's the flavor of the yes, month. And, and in fact, there's an old saying that says, uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. So that's exactly what you're talking about. Danny, I mean, what do you have to add to that? Well, again, yeah, it's, it's the flavor of the month. Uh, it does seem like we're being driven by the media. You go to Google and uh, you, what is Bitcoin is actually the third most searched term or, or phrase going on right now. So it, again, it's just prevalent everywhere. Uh, but in so many other cases, like it's already been referenced, um, uh, you know, it has the move already taken place. Um, you know, uh, you know, we as a consumer investing crowd, we have this what's called FOMO, fear of missing out. And so we don't want to miss out on the next run up, uh, whether again, I can remember when Walmart, the stock Walmart was a big buzz and everybody was trying to get into Walmart. That's back in the you know late 80s, early 90s. But um, again, so, you know, crypto seems to be all of the. Uh, the 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 rage right now, and it has a lot of pluses to it. But boy, you, and it, as we'll discuss on the show in detail, uh, it has also has a lot of negatives too. Well, yeah, one of the big pluses is 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 right now where we're seeing another stimulus plan being talked about in Congress. They're just literally creating money out of thin air. Bitcoin, I think, uh, is once 21 million Bitcoin has been mined, the code supposedly, you, you, they cannot make more Bitcoin. But, uh, you know, uh, it really, it's such a complex thing. I, I, I call me cynical. <laughs> I, uh, I how, do, how do they how do they not start Bitcoin two or Bitcoin A or B or I mean, so but. There, like you said, the pros. A lot of the pros, or a lot of the allure to it, maybe, is the fact that um, it's it's non regulated. But there, there comes quite a bit of cons with that as well. Yeah, yeah. Again, w with the U.S. dollar, it, it's controlled by the U.S. government. With Bitcoin, it is decentralized, so there isn't a uh, there isn't a entity or or something that we trust in. We're actually trusting in something that's invisible. Uh, the U.S. government, in all its uh, all its uh, problems that it has from time to time, it's it's visible. <laughs> so, yeah. And well, I mean, um, so let's talk about that, how uh, it's in the news all the time. But um, there are, while there are still uh, a number of companies that don't accept it as a form of payment, the list is growing. And there's actually a search engine out, out there that you can actually go and and you can find all the different online stores that use it or accept it. Uh, there's one vendor that kind of gives you uh, um, I, I, I saw that it, it gives you kind of a kickback or a rebate in Bitcoin. So you can start adding that to your account. But again, all of it boils down to this is something that's non tangible. That's and that uh, is is somewhat still very hard for society to get their heads around. That's right. But then the media uh, continues to run it up because of all the hype around it. And then now you have um, successful, high profile entrepreneurs getting behind it and, and pushing that. So seems but, to legitimize. Yeah. What uh, Elon Musk also talked about another one. And I'm going to 
pronounce it wrong because I've heard people call it doggy coin or doge coin. Do, doge, doge coin, yeah. Do, doge coin, yeah. But there's a little dog mm-hmm. as their little symbol. So it's, is it doggy coin? I mean, I would. But right now, it's it's uh, it's seen some rapid uh, appreciation. But for the most part, um, it's still pennies and and i think i was talking to jonathan uh, our advisor in kansas city about it over the weekend and he said uh he was reading reports on where it was actually started as a joke but now that it's just got some traction because someone's tweeting it or someone's talking about it but these cryptocurrencies um don't like you said with the fear of missing out be careful with the allure that you have there to to start participating in it and then larry very poignantly pointed out as well the fact that if you if you get sucked into all this hype and all this uh hoopla uh you might you might be getting yourself into something that you have no idea what it is and and um still there's a lot of unknowns that go along with it so you just need to be careful with that so we'll talk about that when we come back from the break here about um where you guys are maybe talking to people in the conference rooms as far as um recommendations when they say should i buy it and 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 what questions you go there so stay tuned with that we'll be right back after this break with more We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. Like Retire Hour? Like us on Facebook to get highlights and clips from the show. Go to facebook.com slash retire hour. This segment of Retire Hour is brought to you in part by Paul Gray Homes. Hi, I'm Matt Goolsby, partner at Market Advisory Group here in Wichita. If you have a 401k at a former employer, we're offering a free visit to discuss your options. Call 316-252-8707 to discover your strategies to help you get your money back on track to serving you. Remember, it's not about your money, it's about your life. Call us today at Market Advisory Group for your free 401k strategy session. 316-252-8707. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Don't forget to visit our website, retirehour.com. You can also download our podcasts anywhere you find podcasts. Just search for Retire Hour. You can also view the information that you've seen in these episodes on our Facebook page, Retire Hour. And also you can look us up on YouTube by searching Retire Hour. Uh, Plenty of information, past episodes. You can uh, view the streamed video version of our show as well. Get an idea of what it looks like here in studio. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Well, thanks for joining us this week on Retire Hour. We wanted to highlight a lot of different topics when it comes to cryptocurrency because I myself and I like the others that we work with here have been getting a lot of questions on it because of all the media attention that it's been receiving these past couple of weeks in the media. And, you know, so, Larry, when people do ask you, how 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 should I get involved with this? Is this something I need to be paying attention to? What is your response to that when talking with someone about their retirement nest egg? Well, you know, from the very beginning, when we were asked about this, started being asked about this several years ago, I would always use the same term, and that is this is highly speculative. Uh, only use as much money as you're willing to lose. Um, and that really hasn't changed. I mean, when, especially when you're talking to people who are relying on retirement money, um, you know, those kind of things is what you do in Vegas. That's not what you do with your retirement money is investing in really uh, uh, highly speculative stock. Kevin O'Leary uh, of Shark, uh, Shark Tank fame, he said that you have to be mentally prepared and financially prepared to invest in speculative stock like Bitcoin. Yeah, that's good advice there, I think, because, uh, again, with how volatile it is, just as quickly as it can run up, it can drop just as much. And we've seen that in the past, uh, historically speaking, it is nearing all time highs for what it's being traded at or or uh, exchanged for. But at the same time, we've seen it run up and then fall back and run up and fall back. So that's that's not what you really want your uh, your income in in retirement to be um, tied to. 
That's right. So that's right. Danny, what what are some of the things you're you're uh, talking with people about when it comes to uh, when you get that question? Well, again, just echoing what you guys have already said, but you know, it's incredibly volatile, incredibly volatile, and. I often will, will paint a picture for folks when we start talking about Bitcoin. How many times do you go to a theme park and ride a roller coaster as a retired couple? You know, when I was at last at Disney World, I, and you go through the turnstiles and you wait in line to go on a particular ride, if it's a roller coaster, you know, they always have that sign there right there before you get on the ride that says, if you're not so high in height, if you're not, uh, if you have a heart condition, if you're pregnant, or if you're the elderly, you should not get on this ride. And I want to say that, you know, Bitcoin is uh, one of the darlings and it certainly has the media buzz right now. You know, in 2017, December 2017, Bitcoin was trading for 20,000 a coin. Uh, A year later, it was trading for 3,200 a coin. Today, it's at 42,000 a coin. And that's just not a recipe for uh, for tranquility in retirement. Uh, Is it fun to do? watch that with a little bit of your money? And I'm saying a little bit of your money then maybe that's one thing. But to uh, have any kind of security in your future uh, with with what may be a fad, you know, someone said one time, it said for those who see cryptocurrencies as Bitcoin, such as Bitcoin as a currency, it has to be noted that that currency has to be stable. And there is no stability right now with, I mean, it's just all over the place. Well, and still, again, with uh, it's just still being understood really i mean for the large part of the population maybe it's not even understood for the large pop- part of the population but it's still uh, becoming known and and it's still not widely accepted but so do you think you, you mentioned fomo fear of missing out do you think there's maybe a greed aspect that comes in here oh sure uh, again as consumers and uh, in- investors we have two major emotions in our lives one is greed the other one is uh, of losing you know fear of losing and so, and I often will talk with, with uh, people that, that I visit with in our conference rooms that, you know, you have one voice on one shoulder, you have the other voice on the other shoulder. And, uh, you know, which voice in your head do you listen louder to? Uh, you know, um, I want to swing circle back if I can to something Larry and I were talking last week, something completely unrelated. But the segue for Bitcoin is back in 2007 and 8, and Larry, please chime in. What was that where you said you had these traders on Wall Street that were investing in derivatives and they didn't even know what they were what they were investing in? And yet here we are, people now. It, uh, Bitcoin is now the rage. And Matt, what you just said about people don't understand it. That's even the professionals don't understand it. It's just as a uh, collective crowd, we're all getting on the Bitcoin rage. And again, in 2007, eight, I'm not saying we're going to have a crash like that, but people don't understand this. And yet they like, well, it's going to work out. And well. Maybe not. Larry, you have anything to add to that? Yeah. I mean, it, it, people always see something with a meteor. How, how do you say that? Meteorite. I, I can't even say Meteoric. it. A rise. Yeah, there you go. Rise. And, um, um, but then they don't really have the same interest in it when it's going down. They just peaks their interest when they see it going up. So, um, yeah, it kind of reminds me in some cases like derivatives, um, a lot of people, a lot of institutions bought derivatives, mortgage backed securities and things like that. And they didn't even understand them. And if institutional buyers can't understand it. Then how, how does the individual investor under, understand it and invest in it? Yeah, and I was reading several articles uh, preparing for the show that that you know while there's not a ETF out there or a traditional ETF that you can go buy on the exchange traded market is because it's not traditional. The, this is this is just something that's um, uh, not in the mainstream or not normal in the, the Securities and Exchange Commission. They're they're hesitant to allow an ETF to be traded. Now there are some similar things uh, out there, uh, an ETN, an exchange traded note out there. I think in Germany and Sweden I was seeing. But then also um, there's a closed in trust here in the U.S. BTC. I mean, there's there's different things that you can do there, but it's just it's still still kind of new. And and while it's new, the media is going to be reporting on it. And we just want to caution.
caution everyone out there to make sure you try and fully understand it before you get involved with it, because you just you don't want to get burned with that. And don't get caught up in the greed that can happen there as far as the fear of missing out and wanting to, quote unquote, think it's easy money because it's very very volatile. And, and like Larry and Danny both have said, it's also highly speculative. The only thing really driving the value of this is people buying into it and that's causing the price to go up. And while we want to caution everyone out there, we don't want to necessarily say avoid it entirely. Just make sure you get more education on that. And if you want to have a conversation with that, we can uh, talk with you here in the office. Call our office at 316-252-8707 or our Kansas City office there as well. But uh, we'll, we'll be covering some more things here on the second half of the show, which I think is very interesting, especially when it comes to these assets. If you do buy into them, how do they get transferred or even if they can transfer to the next generation with our attorney, Gerald Eidelman. So stay tuned for that. And then also some tax questions that you'll be getting asked this year when you go to get your taxes prepared. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this commercial. Stay tuned for more Retire Hour. Subscribe to Retire Hour on YouTube to see the latest episodes as soon as they're released. Subscribe at youtube.com slash retire hour. This segment of Retire Hour is brought to you in part by River City Sweet Shop. Every client we work with, we make a custom made plan to fit them. We can take any situation that's thrown in front of us, look at what fears they may be trying to work through and come up with very creative solutions. We are unique to people that are seeking to try to have the complex things more simple. We work together as a team, as an advisor, it'll come up with tax questions. It's great to have a CPA here in the office that can answer those questions and give them accuracy. Market Advisory Group, proud to be local. Check out our website, retirehour.com, where you can watch past episodes and stay up to date with current episodes. Also check out our Facebook as well, Retire Hour, for clips from the show. And don't forget to go and see us on uh, YouTube. Search for Retire Hour or download our podcast of the episodes anywhere you can download podcasts, searching Retire Hour. back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. Thanks for tuning in this week. We hope you find this information helpful and educational. And, you know, Bill, we've been talking about uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency the, for, for is kind of the theme of the show this week, but that doesn't really apply to Medicare. So in our <laughs> Medicare no. portion here, um, I thought it might be a, a good, good to kind of revisit this. We've talked about it last year, but um, I've, I've heard people before say, well, I don't need, I don't need to worry about going into a nursing home. Medicare will pay for it. Right. And that is a huge myth. I know a lot of people believe that, but that is not true. So when people are, um, working with Medicare, when they have their Medicare, I think it's important to maybe tell everyone out there and give them a, a brief education on what does Medicare pay for? And when, when does kind of Medicare, um, stop paying for anything? All right. So to answer that question, I'm I'm going to read briefly out of the book that is titled Medicare and You. Everybody on Medicare gets one of these books every couple of years. But there's this lost form, lost art called reading <laughs> and people don't do it anymore. But I'm going to read out of the book here just briefly. So bear with me. Skilled nursing facility care. Medicare covers semi-private rooms, meals, skilled nursing and rehabilitative services furnished in a skilled nursing facility. These services are only covered after a three-day minimum medically necessary inpatient hospital stay for a related illness or injury. You may get coverage uh, of skilled nursing care or skilled therapy care if it's necessary to improve your current condition. To qualify for skilled nursing facility coverage, your doctor must certify that you need daily skilled care like intravenous fluids, medications, or physical therapy, which as a practical matter can only be provided to you as an inpatient of a skilled nursing facility. Medicare doesn't cover long-term care. And then to go on a little bit on this, it says you pay nothing for the first 20 days of each benefit period. 
from the 21st to the 100th day, you pay a daily copay of $185.50 a day. That's from the 21st to the 100th day. And then you cover all of the cost after the 100th day. Now, to back up and translate this back into English, <laughs> it's skilled nursing facility care. They really need to change the name of this to a rehab facility. It's to help you recover from a stroke, a knee replacement, something that you need additional time that they're not going to let you lay on a hospital bed for. Uh, and it is for rehabilitative services. It is not to take care of you for so, the long term. So then so you could uh, you could say it in another way as far as if you're not improving, they're not going to pay for it anymore. Exactly. And they track it weekly. Wow. And okay. if they find that they are that what they're doing is not improving you in any way, then it's bye bye. So if you're if you're not improving or declining, it's going to shift to being something out of your pocket. Correct. Or something you're going to have to pay for. Or you're going to have to go home and and maybe receive no care. Correct. And I and I thing I come back, this has to follow a hospital stay of three or more days. People don't realize how many procedures today are done on what are what is considered an outpatient basis. You come in this morning, they prep you, they do the, the operation or whatever they're doing, and then they hold you overnight and send you home tomorrow afternoon. And that's not you're not even admitted as an inpatient. So that doesn't even count towards this three days. So the, most procedures that, uh, you know, whether it's knee replacement or uh, any anything, what I, I don't I don't want to call it minor. But uh, if you're not staying in or not admitted for those three days, you're not even going to qualify for any rehab uh, expenses. For, no. So that's 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 mind boggling there. So so where I, you, I think you and I both have heard. Uh, advisors in the past say, well, with your traditional long-term care insurance, you don't need to worry about that 90-day elimination period. Or the first 100 days, yeah. yeah. And it's in reality, you're not even going to get that. I, I tell people, do not count on Medicare covering the first 100 days. Well, to begin with, I just read in the book, they only cover the first 20. Yeah. And then after the 21st day or starting on the 21st day, then you're responsible for that, for that copay, which this year is 185 50 a day. Yes. And so then at then once you reach the 100th day, then you're all out of your own pocket on that. There is no copay along with that. It's it's then something that you're going to have to you're going to have to pony up. Something else I would want to add to this is the myth also goes to home health care. Because people believe that Medicare pays for home health care, but it only pays for home health care under the same circumstances. And the home health care company tracks it, you know, when they're there, are they improving you? And if they reach a week long in there that you're not showing any improvement, then Medicare cuts that off. Is there anything with your supplements, Medicare supplements that helps you pay for some of that home health care if you're re rehabilitating? Not if Medicare is not approving on it. Approving the, you know, the cost. So this is this is really a glaring, um, uh, uh, call it a risk, a, a, a risk that's out there that could be lurking and someone has no idea. It's a huge risk that people could plan for, at least know how to tackle it when it comes along. Yeah, well, most of the time as humans, we just don't really, we don't plan for that. We're, we're only concerned about it when it happens to us, not before the fact. Right. And so when they're looking at this, um, they can have a conversation of maybe... Uh, getting an additional long-term care policy. I know they're expensive, but it's it could be more expensive to not have it. I mean, looking at what's going to be covered and not. Yes, <laughs> you can either plan for it or be the old ostrich and stick your head in the ground and think that it's not going to happen. But in, in reality, most of us are going to experience some form of long-term care before we pass. Yeah, and it's just, again, it's that it's that unpleasant thought. So we don't really want to consider it until it, and all of a sudden it's, it's run over us and it's been impacted. I mean, maybe think about all the people out there right now that uh, have aging parents that are maybe going through some of these situations. They should take lessons from that and prepare for that. That is true. And that's a lot of times when people come to me and ask me about long-term care insurance. And at that point, sometimes they're at the, they've reached an age that the premiums are almost unaffordable. Or what I really run into more often than not, they, have, they now have a health condition that keeps them from qualifying. 
again, we all think we're going to live forever and it's not going to happen to us. So, but great for bringing that in and great for uh, calling that out to attention. If they need want to talk about that more, they can reach out to you at your office at 316-252-8707. And just, uh, just as a quick follow up or lead out here is you can't pay for your Medicare supplements in cryptocurrency yet, can you? I don't think so. I haven't found a way. <laughs> well, thanks, Bill. We'll see you next week. So stay tuned after this. We'll be back with our estate planning attorney, Gerald Eidelman. We'll be right back after this break. Stay tuned for more Retire Hour. Have a retirement question? Go to retirehour.com and submit your question to be answered by the Retire Hour team. It could be answered on air. Submit your questions at retirehour.com. This segment of Retire Hour is brought to you in part by Soteria Technology Solutions. I'm Joshua Sikora, CPA with Market Tax Services. Are you tired of filing taxes yourself? Let the tax professionals at Market Tax Services help. Personal tax preparation for new customers is only $59, and that $59 rate is guaranteed for two years. We also offer discounts to new business customers. Our team of CPAs and tax preparers work together to ensure you receive the best possible service and reduce the stress of filing your taxes. Call Market Tax Services at 803-1040. That's 316-803-1040. Or visit markettaxservices.com. Check out our website, retirehour.com, where you can watch past episodes and stay up to date on current episodes. We videotape them so you can watch them or listen to them. Sign up for our podcast while you're there and get all the information that you can use for helping you in your retirement. Check out our Facebook page as well for clips from the show. Welcome back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. And, you know, in this segment of our show this week that we're kind of highlighting some different cryptocurrency topics that we want to help you get some education on with our estate planning attorney here, Gerald Eidelman, you and I were talking yesterday uh, while Bitcoin is all the rage in the media Mm -hmm. and it's getting some uh, questions from some of the people we work with. There hasn't really been a lot of thought given to how does this asset or how does this whatever you want to call it (laughs) pass to the next generation because it's not in a typical bank account it's not in a typical stock market trading platform account where you can do designations like called tod transfers on death or with named beneficiaries so as with anything uh you know as as something new comes out you start hearing a lot of experiences where oh you know maybe maybe that uh that we didn't think about that. You know, we, we, right. we have to put some thought to that. How would, how on earth, or what, what, are, what are some of the problems here? How, how on earth would this transfer to someone? Well, I mean, first, a little background. I mean, basically, uh, cryptocurrency is stored in a digital wallet. Most people have their digital wallets set, setting up in some form of exchange. Exchanges that are not the same as the New York Exchange or anything like that, they're regulated by, there's three of them, at least in the US, US, US that are regulated by the SEC. But as far as I know, neither the, neither of the three have some method of making it transfer on death or payable on death for your cryptocurrency. So think about that. So you, you go out and buy this cryptocurrency on these exchanges and these digital wallets, not the, not the leather ones that you can put in your back pocket, but in these accounts out there, like a PayPal account or these stock trading account that are on these yeah. exchanges. That's the best in, uh, analogy. analogy yeah. yeah. It's not exactly the same thing, but, and you have these digital wallets when these passwords are ridiculous. I mean, you've oh, seen, yeah, yeah. it's not something typically you can even generate. It's this, it's randomly it, generated account. It's very long and it's, you know, you're not going to remember it for sure. No. So say you've gone out and purchased something, of this you didn't tell your wife uh because she thought it was a crazy investment she was going to be mad at you for mm-hmm. investing into it or or you didn't tell the kids because you know it's none of their business what i have and and when i'm done with it and then you pass away right and, th- and that's a big problem when you're not just with cryptocurrency but other digital assets i mean we haven't had a proper means of being able to transfer these digital assets until just recently now, uh, there, in 2017, in Kansas anyway, they passed the Revised Uniform Fiduciary Access to Digital Access Act. Long name, I had to actually read it out. Uh, and that, in, that gives the executor of your state the power to be able to get, gain access to your accounts. 
Now, uh, that should mean, and I mean that in theory, <laughs> it should mean that your executor or your administrator of your estate should be able to get authority to get your information to access your digital wallet. However, most exchanges are not in the U.S. The majority of them is outside of the U.S. And now you're dealing with a foreign jurisdiction, which may or may not comply with an order from the court and may not have these laws in their own uh, country. So, or they have different probate rules or different estate exactly. transfer rules, or, yep. or they won't recognize your estate planning documents that you have or the power of attorney documents you've done. Uh, oh, absolutely. I mean, all on the list goes on and on because it's just really such an unknown because it's just, it's so new. It's not had to have, uh, it's not had much precedent set to it. No. And there's not, a, I mean, there's, there's some regulations, but it's really not really, f it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, the, the West, the wild West in some ways. I mean, uh, the, and the problem, like I was saying, is people go in and learn basic skills of how to trade this and they'll buy on different exchanges not having any idea where these exchanges are located or what the rules are. Uh, so it becomes a problem of not being able to access what could be worth tens of thousands of dollars because at the end of the day, Bitcoin and all the other cryptocurrency are just a bit of code, letters and symbols and words. There's, there's no hard asset to go in and, and claim. So, I mean... Uh, go ahead and share. I mean, I know you, you've traded some yourself. Share, share some of your personal uh, sure. experiences sure. with this. Yeah. I, I got into Bitcoin in 2017 when the, when there was a huge run up, uh, towards the end of 2017, the Bitcoin went up to $20,000. It looked like a runaway train that it was going to keep going. Well, that was not the case within less than a month after it peaked. It started going down to 10,000, 3,000. It took until December of 2020, three years before it regained its original value. Now, in the past month and a half, it's doubled in value or plus double in value. But there were three years there that I basically had a loss that I, could, I, I couldn't do anything with the money. And if for some reason I had passed away in between, my wife probably would have sold the asset and taken a loss, not knowing what it meant. Had she been able to have your digital wallet. That's right. Had she been able to have your password. That's right. Had she even known about the asset. <laughs> exactly. How would she have gone even and had any authority to go in and, 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 and do that, though? I mean, cause well, we she would have, in, if you were alive, the power of attorney would give her authority, if okay. there is one. If you are uh, deceased, then... If she is the executor, then she would have authority. So she would have had to wait until the estate was probated before Correct. that? Correct. If after you died, yeah. And that's if the exchange, or is the exchange located here in the U.S.? Right. So then it would be recognized by the U.S. courts and they could exactly. say, well, she has right to do this. Right. And the, the courts can enforce this against the exchange to make sure that it happens. Still so many, um, like you said, Wild West kind of mentality. There's yeah. just a lot of unknowns out there because there's just not been the precedence set there no. to go through that. Because, again, it's just so new. And maybe these are maybe these are some one off uh, scenarios that are really happening right now, but it's not being covered in the media. I'm hearing nothing about it in the media. No, I know. And, and there's plenty of, of sad stories of people, not who loved ones don't know their own passwords, but they themselves had lost a password to their account. Uh, sometimes what people do in the past is they put the cryptocurrency in cold storage. That means it's in the hard drive outside of your computer. And they save it there and use a password protected hard drive. Well, there's a gentleman just recently, and it's in Europe. I can't exactly remember the city right now, but he was sitting in pro. It was millions and millions of dollars. And the hard drive gave him 105 times to try a password. A password. And it was down to six and he still was locked out. I mean, and, and, and it was, it was, seven, it, it was double digit mil, million dollars sitting in there. And so, you know, uh, everything we have right now from the utility bills to our banking information to, uh, you know, our stores we shop at online, they make us remember a password, but oftentimes 
that's a password we can pick, right? Can you pick your own password with these exchanges? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. But then some of them, though, are so long and random that I've seen the, the key. Well, that's the address to the digital wallet, the way you see long and, and random numbers. That's the, that's the actual where your money is located. That's the digital wallet where it's at. So you use that to transfer mon uh, cryptocurrency from one exchange to the other or from one individual to the other. Almost kind of like an IP address, right? Yeah. It's, that's it's just the, how you find that specific. Yeah. I mean, again, it's just, it's so hard to give any analogies on anything oh, with this because it's just so different. Yeah. And the technology, I, I hardly understand it, even though I have read plenty about it. So, so you've, uh, you are probably the uh, most educated person in this field that I, of, of anyone that I'm aware of on a personal basis. Would you recommend anyone putting the retirement nest egg in this oh, right God, now? Oh, God. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, think about the fact that. Just today, the uh, Bitcoin lost three thousand dollars in one foul swoop, and it's you know, and this digital asset it has no basis on its its price, the rice 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 and price or the 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 mice and price. At the end of the day, this is built on the greater fool theory. Essentially, you're hoping that there's another fool behind you who will pay more than what you paid. Because that's the only value this thing has, whatever people are willing to pay. Right. So it's not necessarily backed by the gold standard. It's not. Been, no. it's, so it's just basically, uh, if I think it's worth more than you do, so you'll let go of yours and then sell it to me. And that's what kind of dictates the share that's price. That's right. That's right. So it's, it's a very volatile, highly speculative uh, uh, vehicle out there. I don't want to call it a stock. It's not a stock. No. But, and then not to mention, if you have gone out and bought it and you're too afraid to tell your spouse or, or your kids or whatever, Make sure that if you do start getting involved in it, that you, you've got all this stuff written down somewhere. And, and if they have any questions with that, maybe they can call it your office. Absolutely. 316-361-0553. Well, I appreciate you coming in and talking My to pleasure. us about this because it's it's becoming more and more popular in the news. And I'm sure we'll get more questions with it. Absolutely. Well, we'll see you next week on Retire Hour. Stay Thank tuned you. after this. We'll be back with our CPA, Joshua Sakura, which will talk to you about some of the questions you might be getting asked this year about cryptocurrency when it comes time to your taxes. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay tuned. Get more Retire Hour on our website at retirehour.com. Watch or listen to every episode of the show at retirehour.com. This segment of Retire Hour is brought to you in part by Graycon Building Group. Are you trying to game plan for retirement on your own? Retirement is a team sport. Market Advisory Group is ready to join your team. Our in-house advisors, CPAs, and attorneys are ready to plan and work with you. Nobody can play the game on their own. With the team at Market Advisory Group, together we can get you across the goal line of retirement. To schedule a team huddle, call us at 316-252-8707. That's 316-252-8707. Market Advisory Group, your total retirement team. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Don't forget to visit our website, retirehour.com. You can also download our podcasts anywhere you find podcasts. Just search for Retire Hour. You can also view the information that you've seen in these episodes on our Facebook page, Retire Hour. And also you can look us up on YouTube by searching Retire Hour. Uh, plenty of information, past episodes. You can uh, view the streamed video version of our show as well. Get an idea of what it looks like here in studio. We appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm Matt Gould's being in here in studio. We've got our CPA, Joshua Sakura of Market Tax Services. We've been talking in all this episode about cryptocurrency and some of the things you need to consider in this tax segment here in the last segment. What are some things you need to consider about with cryptocurrency? Uh, that's a great question. So everybody this year is going to be asked on the return if they had any kind of transactions dealing with cryptocurrency. For a lot of the people I'm meeting with, I just get a blank stare back. Um, and that's fine. I mean, that's an easy no. For some people, especially if you're somebody who knows what a hard fork and a soft fork is, this segment is not for you. You need the help of a tax professional. For everybody else, um, it kind of touches in different places and people may have different levels of, of activity. You know, there's people we've been talking about quite a bit who are using Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies as an investment. Investment vehicle. In that case, 
um, the tax the way tax touches Bitcoin is or any other cryptocurrency is just like if it was a stock or a mutual fund. As the currency appreciates and you sell it, you're taxed on the gains. If it loses when you sell, then you get a tax benefit for that. Does it participate in the capital gains rate as far as if you've held on to it for longer than 12 months? That's right. It'll it'll get the same capital gains treatment. But if uh, you've held it shorter than its regular ordinary income, regular ordinary income rates. That's right. That's a that's a great point to, to stick out there. Um, now, let's say you're a little bit more involved with it where you're not doing it necessarily through one of these exchanges, but you have your own wallet and you're trading that way. Well, then all the work is on you to keep track of it when you buy it, when you sell it and how much the fair market value is at each of those points. That's a lot more complicated versus just using one of those exchanges. But now let's say you're somebody who you have a business and you're accepting it as as compensation, you know, payment for your goods or services. Well, then you need to be tracking what the fair market value is when you receive it, because that's going to dictate what the dollar value is to you and how you're going to be taxed on that income. Um, let's say you're someone who's really into these cryptocurrencies and you are doing the mining where you're actually uncovering the, the, the cryptocurrency. Well, then you're going to be taxed as if this is a business activity. Self-employment taxes are going to apply, which can get expensive. And um, whatever expenses you might have can count against the value of the, the currency for your taxes. Um, a couple other places it's going to, to stick out is if you're giving it as a gift, whether it's to another individual when um, they'll need to know what that currency is worth to you so they can do the appropriate um, income treatment for that gift. And then if you're giving it to a charity, lastly, um, it's going to the value of that gift is going to depend on how long you've had it. If you've had it for at least a year, then it's going to be fair market value when you give the donation. But if it's been less than a year, then it's and this is where they stick. It's going to be the lesser of the fair market value or what it's worth to you. So there's some interesting play in the rules there. So all these different rules and all these different complications we've talked about all the show, uh, you know, whether it be from where do you acquire it, had the fl- fluctuation of its value mm-hmm. to the estate planning, sticky problems to now the hairy problems of the tax consequences and treatment. Would you even want to mess with this stuff personally? I mean, <laughs> not unless you have a, like a hobby passion for it, you know, whether it's wanting to be on the cutting edge of some investment thing, whether you like, you know, it's a technology thing and you like doing new stuff. Um, uh, my recommendation is unless you have a passion for it along that hobby interest line, I, I wouldn't bother messing with it. Go go for gold or something that's easier to keep track of. It's certainly tangible. But so but I mean, uh, whether it's the tax consequences or estate planning consequences, a lot of people don't really consider that until after the fact. And with these tax consequences, uh, you know, be, it, it, it could bite you uh, and it probably will bite you because Uncle Sam wants his piece of the pie. That's right. A lot of people have already been bitten by it. So make sure you keep good records and know what the tax rules apply to you. Well, we want to thank everyone for tuning into this week's show. And if they have any tax questions when it comes to their cryptocurrency, they can call you at your office at 316-803-1040. And uh, don't forget about your tax special you're running as well for new customers, the $59 special there as well. That's great. Well, we thank you for tuning into this week's episode on cryptocurrency. We hope you learned something and we hope you learned how complex it can be. We would like to uh, thank you for tuning in this week and we'll see you next week on Retire Hour. in this program do not represent financial, medical, tax, or legal advice. Please consult with a competent professional to provide advice tailored to your needs and circumstances. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor.